Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me. Now in today's Astro Chat episode, I wanted to explore this very interesting topic of the elite being at home with the occult. So what do I mean by that? I'll take you through that. And the other thing I wanted to explore is recent news as well. So I wanted to touch on the Dutch election and there was a little bit that I wanted to discuss about the American election as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to timestamp this video below and you can skip around and just head into the bit that you want and then head off and do your day. All right, so this concept of the elite being at home with the occult. What am I talking about here? Now this is just a little idea that I had while I was watching a short clip on YouTube that featured the Queen of England. She flies in to India and apparently they had an astrologer say that she can't land her plane at this particular time. She must land one hour later. And I thought that was so interesting. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to play that clip for you now. And then when you come back, I'll just talk a little bit about this concept. So you watch the clip and then I'll talk you through what I see here. The Queen is almost never late. But today the TriStar touched down at Delhi airport five minutes behind the original published time of noon. This though is India and Prime Minister Mrs. Gandhi, hovering under a striped umbrella, takes advice from astrologers. Noon had been deemed an inauspicious arrival time by a very eminent astrologer, and the palace was discreetly advised by the Indians to heed the stars. So I hope you enjoyed that little clip. I found that really interesting. I don't know what I was watching. I randomly watch a lot of stuff. On YouTube so I was just I just clicked on that and I just happened to see that and it was so interesting to me that an astrologer was being consulted by you know the government and by royalty how amazing and one of the reasons I wanted to bring this clip up and bring this up as a discussion piece on the channel was because over the last few months, there has been some political chit chat on this channel and in the comments, I've noticed that there has been a discussion about, you know, is it even appropriate to use astrology uh, to talk about politics? And my answer to that is absolutely, it's totally fine to use astrology to talk about politics. I think it's important that we do so as well. Um, and there's a reason for that. That's because, now I'm going to rub this thing off. I was, all, I was going to take us down a different tangent, but we're going down this tangent, so let's do this now. Uh, the reason is that, you know, if you're looking at a figure here, like GDP, for example, okay, where would we be talking about that? We'd be talking about that in the, well, in the 10th house, perhaps even here, perhaps even here. Government, I tend to think, is seen, I mean, Yes, it's 10 and 9 and it's 5 as well, but let's say, you know, this concept of boiling everything down to one figure and measuring our lives against just, just one figure. And the great thing about astrology is that you never just look at one figure in isolation and make that your only goal in life. You consider any point in here in the context of the whole and how it relates to all other things. That's the training that an astrological mind receives, right? So if you're looking at GDP, you're considering not just one figure there, you're reading the whole line and you're looking at how it affects the land and how it affects farming and how it affects our lives, right? In, in, in bigger ways. You're not just looking at one tiny thing and making that your only goal. And that's the great thing about, you know, um, being an astrologer because <clears throat> it really trains your mind to simultaneously think about lots of different things at once and how all are, of those things are impacting each other all at the same time. So when it comes to politics, definitely, you know, for me, I mean, this is the tool of empire builders, right? We've just seen the queen 
and I think it was Indira Gandhi there as well, wasn't it? Like they are using this tool and it really got me thinking about, yeah, do the elite use this stuff and do they like this stuff? Oh, they absolutely do. They use this stuff all the time. And I was listening to a numerologist uh, recently on the internet and he was saying that they have used numerology as a tool to shape and condition and kind of brainwash society. Uh, and some of the things he was saying was just incredible. Like it was an hour long interview that I was watching. But, you know, this question of are the elite uh, at home with the occult? Yes, they absolutely are. And where would I say that we see the elite? I would say that, you know, we definitely see them here, the sun here, royalty, you know, these kind of people are here. And what's four places away? Well, we've got this beautiful eighth house here, which is home of the occult. Four away is, you know, what's at home, right? Uh, or where what you feel at home with or some kind of connection with home. So I just wanted to share that point with you guys to say that, you know, the question, it was definitely raised on one of the comments on one of my videos that, you know, should we even be using politics? Should we even be talking about it uh, with astrology or that it's not spiritual to talk about it? Or, no, I, I don't agree with that at all. I, I think uh, if anything, we should be using this because the astrological mind, as I say, is trained not to, we're not trained to separate things and only view something in isolation. This is the science that gets you to think about, yes, you're looking at one thing, but you're looking at it and simultaneously you're considering everything else at the same time. And that's why I'm currently reading Vandana Shiva's book where she strongly encourages this type of thinking. And I'll share more with you as I learn more from her and what she's teaching. But, you know, she strongly urges that we don't just consider one thing in isolation. She very much talks about the fact that everything is joined up and is linked and interconnected. And, you know, you tamper with one little thing here and, and you're causing a great effect over here right and, and that's so important that we that we think in that way going forward right now the other thing I wanted to talk about in this episode so I've got elite at home with occult plus recent news now recent news let's get into this I didn't cover the Danish have I got that right Danish Dutch no we're dealing with the Dutch aren't we I'm pretty sure I've got that right I confuse the two guys. I apologize. Let me see. I've got him up here. Dutch. We're looking at the Dutch election. Right. I'm on it now. Okay. So 15th January, what happened? I didn't cover this in my last astrological report. I kind of, I kept these two items out <clears throat> because I was running out of time. And, um, you know, I'm also, I might keep some of the political things out of the uh, monthly. I'll, I'll see how I go. I mean, I've really enjoyed doing the monthlies and, and having a news match up at the start. I've really, really enjoyed that because that's a good catalog for me so that I can go back into a certain month and, you know, when I'm reviewing things, um, that's been a really handy thing for me and it's a place where I document my findings and, and all that kind of thing. But I've split it out recently I, I don't know let's see how we go maybe I will just incorporate it back into the monthly I'm not sure I, th I think I did talk about a bit of news last time but um, yeah I, I decided to break this out uh, just to see how that goes so the Dutch election is coming up now we talked about this on the channel before and I said Mark Rutter is very likely to win I had a look at his chart I've got his chart on the screen now and what was fascinating is that, um, you know, when we had that month where we had all those planets in Capricorn, which pretty much wiped me out energetically, I was completely knocked out from what I hear of friends of mine and different people that I know, apparently everyone had some tough stuff that they were going through. And what was Mark Rutter going through? Well, I mean, gosh, by the looks of it, he resigned. Is that right? 
Uh, it says here, Rutter and his entire cabinet resigned on 15th January 2021 in response to a child welfare fraud scandal. When I saw that news, I thought it was absolutely huge. And I actually think it was a good move by him. I actually think some leadership was demonstrated there. It was the right thing to do. I hope all those people who were now, at the time I remember reading about it, were they heavily overcharged? something like that, or they had to pay a lot of money to the government, which they shouldn't have had to do. And I really hope they're getting all of their money and compensation and interest back. So that is, of course, my wish. But what was happening on the 15th of January 2021 to cause a prime minister and is it a prime minister? Yes, it is a prime minister, not a president and his entire cabinet to resign. What caused that? OK, so let's take a look. So we've got from his ascendant, Really, there's all that activity. Six, now I'm gonna bring it up on my screen here as well. Six from the Ascendant, we've got, I think there are, yeah, six planets in there on the 15th of January, right? That's that immense pressure cooker that I was talking about. He must have been under a huge amount of pressure to do what he did, right? Um, and that's six, from the ascendant, sixth from the ascendant, that is definitely where social services type payments are coming out of. Okay, and this and a few other things have got me thinking about how does money move around the charts? And I am gonna record that on the channel soon. So stick around, I'm gonna do a video about how money moves. And one of the things that we've got here with the movement of money in and out of the sixth house, I'm pretty sure I jotted down, I'll, it's in another uh, place where I write stuff down. I, it, social payments are definitely coming out of the sixth house, right? Government type payments, but you know, workers and people are here. The people are definitely here in this house and they're in other places too, but social payments, this is, this is spot on. So we're definitely dealing with this house here. Uh, and we have Mars just about to conjunct Uranus. So that's on his moon, which is affecting him directly, but that's 10th from his ascendant. So if I've got that right, no, that's actually ninth from his ascendant. Okay, well that is still, that is, that still is totally perfect because a sudden change of leadership, a sudden change to fortune as well, we could say. Authority is here, definitely. Also the thing about him being, let's say looking at him as the father of the nation, we see the father from here too. There's lots of different things that we can interpret here. There's also Rahu here as well. All of this is causing some pretty extreme energy. And this is again, the three players that I had seen, I think towards the end of last year with Rupert Murdoch's chart. I saw these exact three players being really significant there. And it's really interesting, this thing of uh, Mars, yeah, Mars, Uranus and Rahu, there, there can be a real triggering when those three come together, a real triggering of some kind of energy that is provoking, it provokes a fight, a standoff, a collision, something major just coming out of nowhere, a 180 degree turn, about turn, right? This kind of energy, this kind of major, just, whoa, where did that come from? So we can definitely see from Mark Rutter's chart that, you know, a major event can happen. It's really interesting, Mars and Uranus, this phenomenon was happening in the sky, it was happening for all of us, but not all of us had to resign or get all of our teams to resign or you know, have something absolutely major like that happen. But if, if you're ripe and ready for you know, that next step in your life or for the next thing to happen, an event like this, you know, Mars and Uranus, it, it can 
cause something to happen. It can, you know, it, it, it'll just absolutely match up. And I, I think this is a pretty good uh, example. This may not be a case study that I would use going forward. I'll tell you what is a case study that I would use going forward. And we're going to take a look at this chart now. We're going to have a look at uh, Donald Trump's chart and what happened with him on the 20th. I think it was the 20th of January. Well, this was what I, yeah, this was what I was looking at earlier today. This is a case study. I have to share this with you. I know he's not the most popular person in the world. And for some reason, when I mentioned his name, the thumbs up, uh, thumbs down goes up on my videos. And like, I get really negative comments and people being really upset. What I will say is, if you don't like listening to this kind of thing, just watch another video or, you know, you don't have to watch, right? So don't, don't worry, um, but I, this is a good case study because to me, this is something that I'm sure I will refer back to uh, in the future or, you know, it's definitely lodged in my mind now as, as a really good case. So for those of you astrology students out there who like to have good case studies and, and see cool things in the sky that really match what's happening here on the earth plane, then um, stick around for this. So on the 20th of Jan, we've basically got Mars and Uranus exactly conjunct uh, there in Aries, okay? Now, that's very exact. Let me just, we're looking at 12 degrees 49, 12 degrees 35, yeah, it's the 20th. The 20th is the day, right? So we can see that the, the 20th and it absolutely triggers an event for him. What event does it trigger? So we've got, if we have a look at the chart here, we've got from the moon, we have all of this planetary activity because Saturn's gonna be materializing something. And I'm seeing Mercury, Jupiter and Sun not so much Pluto, but I'm definitely seeing the Sun, Jupiter and Mercury as people around him. Okay, and that Saturn's gonna be materializing something here. Um, so we've got third from the moon, we've got all of this planetary activity happening here. This planetary activity is sixth from the ascendant, okay? And we have this Mars pretty much in square to all of this, okay? So what's third from the moon? It's friends. What's sixth from the ascendant? It's enemies. On the day when Mars and Uranus conjunct, what's the about turn? What's the 180 degree shift? What's the total transformation or, or you know, the, the massive transformation that happens here? It is the friends become enemies. That is exactly what happened, right? We saw that. We saw, I saw video footage. I actually downloaded some of that footage onto my laptop because I thought it would get deleted. There were lots of things that were being put up and then getting deleted very quickly. And one of them was this video footage of Mike Pence receiving a coin and Nancy Pelosi really bumping shoulders, uh, arms, with him or elbows or whatever, I don't know. Like that footage was incredible. You know, he, he kind of received a coin and it was all very hush hush. There's a, one gentleman sort of giving the coin and there's another gentleman saying, no, put this away, hide it. And all that kind of crazy stuff. Like it was, wow, that was just something to watch. So that was, that to me, that was a thing of, you know, Donald Trump, all of the people around him who were seemingly friends uh, overnight, straight away, just, just 180 degree turned into enemies and it's written in the sky. Now, a person might turn to me and say, well, why didn't you predict that? Why didn't you see that? You looked at this chart, you looked at this exact day, you were saying that, you know, it's got a strong chart and that he's got a stronger chart than Biden and you never saw this. Why didn't you see this? Okay, here's why. Because I was looking for a win or a loss and my mind was programmed that okay I'm looking for a win or a loss and I'm looking in it in a very narrow kind of a way and, and this is something that I've learned through this experience of predicting this is a really good little case that's helping me see a lot of things about 
what I do and the way that I do it. And I was thinking about this earlier today, how when one of you books me for a reading, for example, I have a form and I have a free form portion of that where you're able to state what it is you'd like me to look into. And some of you go to a lot of trouble and you put a lot of detail and you'll say, well, you know, I'm moving and then this is happening and yeah, my love life and I, I want this job and I'm not sure and this and that. And you'll tell me some stuff. And those readings can be really great because I can see what's happening in your life. I'm not a psychic or any of that. And I do a lot of research before I prepare my notes and then uh, record your session. So, you know, that's the way in, in which I work. And when you give me a lot of information, I use every single bit of it, right? I use all of that and I try to match everything up and I try and see, okay, how is this person's planets working and what can I see? And, and, and sometimes that works absolutely beautifully, right? Sometimes I have the weird thing happen where if there's way too much information, not that anyone's ever put too much information on the form, but sometimes it can happen that there can be overwhelming amounts of information. Sometimes that's not so good bizarrely you would think that the more information the better I'm actually discovering sometimes you know just just the amount that's in the form that's actually perfect sometimes when I do readings for you guys the person will just write um, career and love full stop like the, there will be zero information and I love those readings too because then we're just working purely with the stars I know nothing about you and I've got a free form empty canvas and it can be a very pure experience of just just you know what comes in and what I'm being guided to look at and, and you know that that can be absolutely incredible so for me I don't mind either way I don't actually have a preference for do I want lots of information or do I not want lots of information and you can see here with this case of Donald Trump my mind was programmed and it was narrow it was looking for a win or a loss I wasn't thinking about friends turning into enemies or any of that. I was looking for, is this guy going to win? Is he going to lose? And that's all I was looking at. And that's actually quite narrow of me. See, I, I need to, th this whole experience has been great because it, it's really got me to see that, um, that when I'm looking, you know, even when I'm looking and I, I did just draw that thing just now, didn't I, with the GDP, like I mustn't be, programmed by one narrow thing, by one narrow goal. I must always uh, be considering the whole and be considering all the players on the chessboard kind of thing. You know, I, I need to think of, of everything. All the houses, the empty houses, the, you know, um, the lords, of course, but like everything, everything needs to be considered at the same time. So, yeah, I really like this uh, case study in terms of just this, just the sky poetry of seeing that it's it's literally written in the stars that you know the friends will turn into enemies. I just thought, wow, that's that's pretty amazing. Um, yeah, and it has got me to think a bit more deeply about predicting. Oh, what's the time? We're running out of time here. Guys, I think I'm going to let you go. I do have another thing to say about the whole prediction thing. I wanted to talk about a prediction that was given to me. Sorry, the camera got cut. I, I was just going to say that there was a prediction that was given to me, which partly came right, but also partly didn't come right. So I'll tell you very, very quickly. I'll just tell you, this is super quick. I was, it was predicted for me that I would meet a particular person end of 2017, and I was given some very specific information about who this person would be and, you know, very, very specific. I didn't realize that I'd met this person until 2018 in January when I listened to the audio and I realized, oh my gosh, this is that person. And it was predicted that, you know, uh, that that would be someone, say, for example, very significant in my life. And um, I, I don't know, it, nothing ended up happening, right? But for me, the prediction was correct because I did meet the person. Okay, nothing happened, right? But it doesn't matter. The astrology was still accurate, mind-blowingly so. I was very impressed uh, by what that astrologer did. He didn't predict everything right. Some things he didn't get right, but it doesn't matter. I, I was amazed and blown away by his level of accuracy and what he was able to do. So. 
you know, in this case of Donald Trump's chart, would I say that I got the prediction wrong? In this instance, I wouldn't. I'm always very eager to say I got something wrong. You know, I don't have a problem with that. I got, um, I said that there'd be floods in Australia when uh, the Rahu Ketu axis shifted. It didn't happen. We have had a lot more rain, so that has been good. But, you know, I, I didn't quite, it didn't come as, as I, I predicted. I definitely thought there should be uh, floods. They, they didn't happen. So I'm always willing to say if I got it wrong. In this instance, I'm not, yeah, I'm not, uh, I'm not saying I got it wrong. I do, I do think this is still, and maybe the win, maybe the win has been that he's alive and hasn't been killed. Maybe it's that. I don't know. But otherwise, I'm out. When it comes to politics these days, it's just, it's just too, um, gosh, it's, it's strange out there and I, you know, I, I, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how I go. Maybe I will keep predicting interesting things, but I mean, look, if it's, if it's important, I'll deal with it. I'll tackle it. So anyway, guys, I just thought, I just wanted to catch you up on the latest, uh, the news matchup, because this is stuff that I have been looking into. And I think we're just about up to date on all that sort of thing. But I'm going to keep making more videos, so stick around on the channel. Stick around, look out for the one about money. That should be kind of interesting. I'm going to take a look at um, how money flows through the chart. Uh, I, I've got a whole bunch of notes that I scribbled down the other day, and, and that should be quite an interesting video as well. So stick around, there's more to come. All right, thanks so much, and I look forward to seeing you next time.